helping hand. A friendly turn. Don't count on it. Just winning isn't enough for Penn State. They need to win big. They won't find sympathy in Champaign. Notre Dame has had a long, tough season, but the Seminoles are thinking combat, not compassion. The Bulldogs can spoil the Tide season, and that has them dancing in Starkville. Can the Ducks be ambushed on the road to the Roses? The winner of the Trojans Wildcats more hope so. Get ready for another friendly week in college football. Provo, John Walsh, and the Cougars set to take on the Aztecs, a recent tradition of very close, very high-scoring games. The main big game in Illinois to try to gain back some of that support. It's their final Rose game, uh, a road game, I should say, that can lock up the Rose Bowl bid with the win. By the way, Lou Tepper said he would question the intelligence and the motives of that one coach who is voting Penn State sixth in the polls. The Illini, a gimpy offense, needed a controversial last-second touchdown to beat Minnesota. For more on this game, we go live now to Steve Cipher standing by in Champaign. Hi, Steve. How you doing, Chris? You know, Saturday marks the final home game for 25 Illinois seniors, and they are fired up, especially linebacker Dana Howard, who needs just 12 tackles to break the Big Ten career record in that category. Now, the Illinois offensive line is hobbling a bit. Three players injured last week, but all three of them, uh, Blackman, Suarez, and Kerr, will start Saturday. For Penn State, it's the defense. Four players who combine for 13 starts and 68 tackles will not play in this game. Clarence Stewart didn't play last week against Indiana, and the loss of Tate and the nickel coverage could be a key. Still, the Nittany Lions are favored in this one, and Coach Lou Tepper says that the reason Penn State is so much better than a year ago is simple. The huge difference this year between uh, them and a year ago is, is not the offensive line. It's not even the development of the wide receiver. It's the development of the quarterback. Uh, a year ago, the quarterback, I mean, they, they only, they had, I think, 200, less than 250 yards total offense against us, uh, but they could not throw the ball effectively against us a year ago. Now, the quarterback he's talking about, of course, is Kerry Collins, but there'll be another one on the field Saturday, and that's Johnny Johnson. He's coming off a career-high 291-yard passing performance against Minnesota. Now, you take that, combine the fact that Tate is out of there, and that Penn State ranks number 62 in pass defense, you got to believe, Chris, he'll try to put it in the air Saturday. Well, what about the weather? Is that going to affect them putting the ball in the air and also the unfamiliar surroundings for Penn State? You're right. Penn State comes here for the first time ever. And we're told that while the weather will be warm enough and dry enough, it will be windy. And the wind here at Memorial Stadium gets kind of tricky. If you haven't played here before, it'll take a while to settle in. That will be to Illinois' advantage, Penn State's disadvantage. That's the way it goes with the wind. Okay, I can tell the wind's playing with your hair there, Steve. All right, thanks a lot. It the always Illinois, does. <laughs> the Illinois defense is a story. Last year held Penn State to 244 yards. The problem was their offense put them in such a big hole that the game was pretty much over in the first quarter. Well, you know, Illinois will be the best defense that Penn State has played by far. But the problem trying to stop Penn State, forget it. They have unbelievable offensive balance. Now, I've been in coaching for over 40 years around football. That's the best offensive balance I've ever seen. Now, you add one thing to that. A wacky, whack game. San Diego State and BYU coming up in just a couple of minutes. Jerry Punch has a preview. Thanks, Chris. Tonight's matchup features two teams which specialize in offense. What a surprise. After all, we are in the WAC. BYU's sophisticated passing game is led by a preseason WAC Offensive Player of the Year in their junior quarterback, John Walsh. Now, San Diego State counts with a wide-open, no-huddle offense, led by a potential 1,000-yard rusher and senior running back, Wayne Pittman. Now, area forecasters have predicted possible freezing rain, snow, and a sizable accumulation of points. But as of yet, the rains haven't arrived, the snow is limited to the mountaintop, and if history's any indication, the points will come early and often here in Provo tonight. Chris? Okay, Jerry, we're getting weather forecasts from all over the place. <laughs> what do you forecast for the Cougars' offense? Well, first of all, I talked to Lavelle Edwards, and I got a scoop for you. BYU is going to open this thing up early. My friend, watch. A wide reverse real early. All right, I'm looking for you, my friend. <laughs> I, you know, John Walsh, they've got to hope that the weather is bad at San Diego State because the guy is awesome. He's behind Eric Zire, 24 yards from being the total offense leader in passing yards, and he's only one touchdown short from leading that category. The guy will play on Sunday afternoons. He's an awesome player, and only the wind will slow him down tonight. Absolutely. All right, just alongside the Wasatch Mountain Range where San Diego State and BYU match up. The high scoring whack. These teams have been lighting up scoreboards for years, and especially here in the 90s.
Watch out. The wind is starting to kick up, and a storm is on the horizon. As we welcome you to Provo, Utah, the 22nd ranked Cougars of BYU taking on the Aztecs of San Diego State. And with only what makes it difficult for the defenses around the WAC to defend is the fact that they have a good running game. Jamal Willis, number 29, is an excellent back that they like to run inside off the counter. So they've got a good system here with two good uh, multi-dimensional attacks. Birds of fixture, 23 years at BYU, 205 career victories, ninth best on the all-time list and 16 weapon. one of the best all-time receivers they've ever had here we'll get back to that in just a second here comes the blitz walsh on third and nine plenty of time and almost a brilliant grab by tim nowatsky the bundle a wide open receiver inside the 25 sheer the man i was talking about first play of the game touchdown san diego state for them at least offensively there is a flag back at the line of scrimmage though Offside, defense, penalties declined, touchdown. What took so long? Here by Billy Bland to Wayne Pittman. That's really what made the play. Curtis Shear is going to run a post pattern, and he's he's just got the defensive back. Corey Cook beat for the touchdown. Patrick Mitchell, number 30, trying to catch him, but San Diego State strikes first. To you by Buick, makers of the concept car you can drive, the 1995 Riviera. And by Rayovac Renewal, reusable alkaline power. That's the power of renewal. Just at the base of the Wasatch Mountains, the LDS Provo Temple. Now, welcome back to Provo, Utah. Joel Myers, Mike Godfrey, Dr. Jerry. Sit out because he's only got one year of eligibility remaining. The play fake for Walsh. Pressure. And a wide open receiver. Close to the first down is a moving. He has stopped a young. BYU coming into the contest, trying to stay tied for the lead in the whack. They're five and one in conference play, eight and two overall. They have one consecutive now. It's five consecutive whack titles for Lavelle Edwards. Well, San Diego State four and five, and two and four in the conference. Third and less than a yard. It's Willis with a flag on the play. It looked like offside San Diego State. They called Norm Charles, the uh, quarterback coach here at BYU, and said, if you only take one quarterback, I'll commit to you right now. And that's exactly how he got it. Good choice by Norm Charles. It's worked out well for both parties. First and 10, the 35. Hey, moving on the dump off. He's got the 41 for a gain of a little more than six. More. They've had some excellent quarterbacks. Ty Detmer, Jim McMahon, Bosco, Steve Young. And, and the coaches here feel like if John Walsh returns next year that he will be as good as they've had here. Big if. Big if. Does have that one year of eligibility remaining. Second and four now. Willis. with more than enough of the first down in Aztec territory for San Diego State, 48. Evan Pilgrim, the outland candidate, the right guard, leading the way. Yeah, they need to have Jamal Willis run that ball. Over 1,000 yards now. He did that a couple of years ago. They got a man over the middle. It's complete to the tight end. Neely, the sophomore from Hawaii, taking it for another first down to the 31. Have to have a head coach that's going to commit to the passing game. First and ten Cougars are down seven to nothing, almost five minutes in the first quarter. The delay for him early. He's got a first down and they take it the distance. Inside the five touchdown BYU. Nice block by the other running back, Jamal Willis, in the process. 31 yards on the score. And Joel Witt, they'll run that screen 10 times a game. What they're trying to do is control the defensive lineman. Second and inches. Nice move by Pittman. Make that's off. They've got a first down. Thrown behind Shear. It'll be second and ten as we head down. The no huddle helps you. Blackwell is the motion man. Here comes the blitz, and it's dumped behind. DeAndre Maxwell, the H-back, as they tried a similar play to what we saw at work here earlier for Curtis Shear. The pressure. So big, 325 and 290. Either 
second best rivalry now. Besides the run in Utes, San Diego State has really been a great rival. Hey, Moore takes a serious hit. It's Ricky to Fishing Arias. Walsh with time. And he's got a man. It's Dolan. Outside of the 15, Bryce Dolan, the senior from Salt Lake. It's a first down for the Cougars. They're now third and better than 10, almost a dozen. The dump off for Pittman. Can he get the first down? He gets a great block downfield from his wide receiver, Curtis Shear. He's very close to where he needed to go. It'll depend upon the spot. He did not get it. Shulet Mobile. The give to Willis with blockers out in front. Good yardage on first down. He had Pilgrim out there again. Throwing the blocks. Mike Gottfried and Dr. Jerry Punch. Welcome back to Provo, Utah. It's tied at seven. Good balance for BYU in the first 15 minutes of play. They got 49 yards on the ground in the first quarter compared to 88 from the right arm of John Wall. She's throwing on second and three. He won't be, though, as he's dropped in the backfield. Good coverage downfield, and we go downfield. So now third and long, third and almost eight. Wall shot of the shotgun. He doesn't cross the line, and he finds Willis. Willis with the first down all the way to the 35 of the Aztecs. What an ad lib by Walsh. When you're used to... There's two 10 Cougars now at the Aztecs 35. They flood that left side. And it's complete. Now second and a short three. Willis, no one to the motion man. So now it's third and about four. Protection for Walsh. Did his man take it in? Was it a one-handed grab by Dolman? I think that's a great catch by Bryce Dolman. No reaction from the lack of officials initially. We're here at Cougar Stadium, first down to the 19. Walsh has the man. Wide open. Touchdown, BYU. And Emily. Always seems to have after a play that bothers the defense a little bit to go for the home run. Uh, he really had two players open on this for the touchdown, but Hema Himuli was wide open uh, down the corner. Pittman has the first down. It's first and goal of the eight. Well, let's go down to two goal outside of the eight. Blanton's rolling for it. And he's got a man wide open. Touchdown, San Diego State and DeAndre Maxwell. Joe, they caught him and they made it look like it was going to be a middle screen. And DeAndre Maxwell was wide open. Corey Cook. And I'm just not ready to go out into the into the business world or whatever. You know, I'm having too much fun being a kid. And, you know, I got a lot of buddies here on this team. And, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to being here another year. Do you like to come out in that kind of business climate? I'll tell you, he's, uh, <laughs> he, he's an outstanding quarterback. Uh, he's got a bright future. Uh, but the coaches here at BYU are hoping he stays another year. Willis at his exit, still close to 10. Walsh, what a grab. Over on the far side for a first down. Again, it's dropped on the middle screen attack. This time, Curtis Shearer. It's a good call. Play fake. And a wide open Jamal Willis gets the block from the wide receiver. All the way to the 40 yard line. Nice block by Bryce Dolman. Downfield. Well, you expect Steve Robinson has taken over at the corner. Number 33. Let's see if they go to work on him. Nope. It's a ruling. And one of the few times they've been able to find. Lost with time. And a perfect pass. He's got his man all the way down. The line. To the 26 for up in 13. And Joel with 102 on the clock. BYU has three timeouts. I'd expect John Walsh to take him down here for a score. They flood him outside and go underneath the hay moving. And he's got the first down, saving the timeout by getting out of bounds with the first down at the 43. Now let's take a close look at John Walsh here again. 235 yards though. 16 of 24. Now it's second and 10. Hey moving available again. They give him the sideline. They say he got out of bounds at the 48. A huge break. Less than two. Very productive. Still, the quarterback coach talking to John Walsh, who helped BYU to their national championship in 1984 when they beat Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. But I was about to say, you figure you get four or five possessions a half. Normal conditions in a football game. This is already the ninth possession for BYU. Care of business for you already. I hope so. Out of the 
shotgun. Walsh on third, but doesn't. Going for the tight end, what a timing play. Coming through to tip it away, the free safety, Ricky Parker. Never watch close. I don't think it... Uh... Didn't look like Tyrone Wright got a piece of it. So now they've got it with one timeout remaining in 17 seconds on the clock at the 19 of the Aztecs. They pick up the blitz. And wide open, Dolan's got it. Touchdown, Cougars. That wasn't a big call, was it? And you go back to that punt block. And what happened on that play has completely turned this football game around. And then a penalty after the punt. Scratch you for the officials' banquet, too. Thank you. I'll be there. Here's the two-point conversion shot. Walsh has his man. It works to Johnston. Shortstop from the baseball team takes in the two after Dolman caught the touchdown. Pick play against man coverage where you bring both receivers inside, and then the third receiver, Mike Johnston, comes outside for the two points. He'll just take it out of bounds. That's the end of the half, an eventful. First 30 minutes of play. We'll come back to Cougar Stadium in just a little bit with BYU leading by seven. But let's head back to the studio now and join Chris Fowler. Chris, thank you, Joel, and welcome to the WAC. Eric Sutton fell down. Kaipo McGuire, number 80, with the reception. As we see the route, you're going to watch the corner out here. Eric Sutton. Here's a little move and watch him fall down. He misses it and falls down. Kaipo McGuire, number 80, stretches out with a great catch down to a seven-yard line. First and goal, BYU. Just about three minutes into the third quarter. Nowatsky, the motion man. Willis, what a get to the corner. Touchdown, Cougars. Joel, you made a comment just before the half of going into the locker room before. Welcome back. First and goal. Black movie. 519 and counting. Left in the third quarter. Looking into the eyes. The helmet of Randy Block, the big left end. Pittman belted into the backfield. The linebacker, Stan Ross. him up to the line at the six, second and goal, and he's got trips to the wide side of the field. The blitz is coming, and he goes down. Stan Ross again. They ran the same play that they scored the touchdown on. Blanton, no match protection here. Going into the corner, and knocked away from DeAndre Maxwell, who is looking for a flag. He had a shot. Field. He had a stinger a moment ago. And some weakness in his right arm. And Rory taking the outside route out of the way. Another first down for the Cougars. Big first down. He wanted to do. Here comes the southpaw. And Rudin. He's got another first down. Inside the 35 for the Cougars. To the 33 on a gain of 14. Brought down by Leonard Jones. Well, Hemo. Reception. He's got it inside the 30, spinning for an extra or two. Good yardage on half. Five straight runs now for BYU, and it produces another first down as the ball is stripped away. Tickets then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Live, the kids. It's a long career when you come to play at BYU. Second and short, second and about three. And Wells changing the play. The punt play to Goldman. To the left now. He's eyeing the left. Now he comes back to the right side. 
inside and looks for Bryce Dorman. He looked off the safety, the skinny post with Bryce Dorman, number 11, making a catch. See the free safety in the middle of the field? John Walsh affected him. He looked him off, and he couldn't get back to make the play. <laughs> Walls 354 as he's completed 23. It's a movie looking for his third touchdown of the night. Will he get there? Yes! Touchdown BYU! Got a solid block from Mike Johnson. Number 84, the wide receiver. Hema Hemuli. A workhorse. Cougars are in control with a flat name offer supplies and by Quaker State 4x4 motor oil, the intelligent oil for hard working engines. Rick Cauldron, the gathering place on the campus of BYU, and welcome back to Provo. Joel Myers, Mike Gottfried, uh, Jerry Punch, and Cougar uh, Hakeem. It is going to be a touchback. It will be a touch for the Aztecs, trailing by 21. Again, pressure. Blanton goes down. John Ross, the right tackle this time. Too much push out of the three to Barry. He's brought his Air Force team along. Not too wide. Couple to the 50. Walsh off the play fake. That's for Fita. Now to the play the game. For the first down, it's dropped. Third and three, Nowatsky could not hang on. Guys, and this San Diego State team has some talent, but they're young. And they're going to be good in years to come. Landon going for Sherry got away, but it's overthrown. And Peterson, another block for Peterson. This looks like something on the keep the stone cops at the end of the play, and he's got a first and goal to the eight. 67 yards. Didn't have the billy club. It's a bust in the coverage here. It's a two-deep coverage, it looks like, but no one got over the top. Ray Peterson with a catch, but now watch him set everything up. Now he's got a pretty good range. Number 80 will come in with a good block. Hawkins sets it up again, tries to come back. Real nice job after the catch by Ray Peterson. Quarter Metro thought he's releasing the safety, but the safety wasn't at home. First and goal from the eight. In the corner he goes. He's got the man there. Is it? Touchdown, San Diego State. Had to wait. Ray Hawkins on the touchdown reception. In the backfield. And it's going to be Hay Mooney. Both second teamers. In the backfield for BYU. Walsh with time. And he's got first down to the 31. Wide receiver to the pop, Mike Johnston, but held on. Ball club that threw a little bit here tonight. And the young ball club uh, really played well with a lot of heart. If Riker is there, it's complete to McGuire, his fourth grab of the night. And will they give him a stop right here? Set. Clock is stopped after the incompletion. Walsh out of the shotgun. Good time, and he hits his man. He looks right behind Mike Johnston. Johnston recovering and adjusting, making a nice grab. Huge first down for the Cougars. Game. John Wall for the Aztecs with only 6.17 remaining. Pittman only needs three. He drives for it. He's got it. What an effort by Wayne Pittman, the senior from San Diego. He is coming on to the John Wall's pass. Sheer up the play fake in good protection. Two tight end formation with an H back. It's Pittman, and he's tripped up in the backfield. What made the Blanton in trouble early has a man if he can get it there. First down, San Diego State taking it in. Daryl Hawkins, the young man who caught the last score for the Aztecs, but what a job by Blanton. As Ross was after him, the outside linebacker. Billy Christian 10, the middle screen is flat with the blitz coming. Finds his man at the 10. He's in. Touchdown, Ray Peterson in San Diego State.
kick it into the end zone, turn it over their defense and hold. They still have three timeouts. So this is a decision for Ted Tolner. Whether will it come to that once again this evening? First and ten for the 31. To Iowa. It's a little more than the five yard line with 242 left. Maybe a yard to the 36, so. Two wide receivers for the Wyatts have the field for Walsh. He's got all day, and he's got the first down, the backbreaker. Tim Nowatsky, the young man that grew up just outside of the Notre Dame campus, but didn't get a look from the Irish. Recruited by Michigan, Nebraska, decided to come here. He's got it. He's in for first down of the 44, San Diego State. Stop the clock momentarily for the movement of the chains. Don't forget, right at 34 yard line of San Diego State, Walsh and the Cougars. Minute 35 and counting left of the game. Hey, Willie. He took his shot. talking to his quarterback coach, former Cougar quarterback, Robbie Bosco. No one in this area will ever forget that win over Michigan in the Holiday Bowl in 1984. National championship for BYU, and it's interesting that it was Bosco who was the quarterback who orchestrated it all. We saw that list of all the phenomenal quarterbacks they've had here, like Jim McMahon, Mark Wilson, and so many others in recent years. San Diego State out of timeouts, down by seven. Trying to strip the ball away. Hey, Mooley. And now third, but about 15 after the loss back to the 49. Most recently, BYU, of course, in the Holiday Bowl last year. Now do they stop the clock? Yes, they barely get the timeout in. Well played football game. Ted Tolbert and his staff to get a running back. Two hands on the ball. Not too wild. Going down at the 48. So moves inside of 35 seconds left of the game. Try to tell your players when you're in the offense and you want to kill the clock, just lay down. Get up as slow as you possibly can. And they will not, they will not have to run another play. So that'll do it in Provo. And the one play at the end of the first half is still going to burn all the way home for the Aztecs of San Diego State. They'll be talking about that one for a long time. The difference of the ball came as the Aztecs came up short, losing by seven. That final score is there's the final gun. But a lot of positives over the last four weeks for Ted Tolner and the Aztecs of San Diego State. Once again, that final score. BYU 35 and San Diego State 28. Now stay tuned for Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann. The big story is coming up. Shaq against Patrick. The magic in the Knicks. The Wisconsin running back arrested earlier today. And a preview of the Cowboys and 49ers. Now for Mike Godfrey, Dr. Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us once again. And good night, everybody. From Provo, Utah.